Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 22, 22nd of the June Nico Daily Challenge. Let's get started. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join the Discord, and let's get single number two. After it finishes loading. Hmm. Okay. Well. Awkward. Let's hit the refresh button. Okay, cool. Single number two. Given a non-empty array of integers, every element appeared three times except for one, which appears exactly once. Find that single one. Your algorithm should have a linear time complexity. Can you implement it without extra memory? Okay. Hmm. So I vaguely do have a recollection for this one, but um, and it is based off the idea that uh, so another variation on this problem was single number one probably I guess is that uh, given an array of numbers uh, with each element appearing twice except for one find that number and the idea is that for every bit it appears twice except for in the final number right so using that idea we could uh, construct something similar for this case except for that instead of using bit and a binary number and instead of using XOR to count we use ternary or base 3 number um, and the idea basically is that you break it down to base 3 numbers and then for each base 3 digit you should expect them to cancel out because they appear three times right because one times three uh so basically that because we're doing it quote unquote uh base three digit at a time we could simplify it by looking at just one digit because all the in the all the digits will act independently of each other but the idea of that is that okay if in the original number the bit is zero then times three is equal to zero one times three is equal to three which is obviously divisible by 3, 2 times 3 is equal to 3. And those are the th um, the three cases that can possibly happen from 0 to 2 inclusive because they're base 3 numbers, right? And because of this, the invariant is that if some number appears 3 times, the sum of them would be 0 because, well, that's pretty much by definition now. Right, we define that as such, except for the one number that sticks out because it only appears once. We can do math to uh, so whatever's left over because every all the other numbers it cancels out. That number will have that number in the base. So okay, so now knowing knowing that we can get started on the entire list. Um, okay, and implementation may be a little bit tricky, so let's kind of see. But uh, we can just have uh, um. It depends on how how big the numbers get, but I'm using a calculator right now. So three. So yeah. So let's just assume that the input size. Uh, it doesn't really say. So I'm going to assume that the input size are about four billion, which is two to the sixty-four, or sorry, two to the thirty-two, uh, and then we just take the log. Uh, I'm just doing it in my calculator. Yeah, okay. Can't really find that button. But but three to the twenty is three four and four billion. So we could use twenty one numbers and that'll be okay. So let's just do digits is equal to uh zero, which is the sum, times twenty one. Uh so let's just set max is equal to twenty one. Uh, let's just go to digits, max digits. And then now, what we also want to set set n is equal to nums, say. And then now for each number, we can uh, add that in that way. So for uh, for num in nums, and then now we do it for each digit, which is for digit in range from 0 to nums, oh sorry, to max digits. Um, so in this case, we will go 
uh, digits of digit. We increment that by, or we add that by the current number, uh, mod three, and then we divide it by three. So we basically just get the last bit, last, I say last bit from habit, but last, last digit that is uh, ternary, right? And then now, after all that is done, we should be able to reconstruct the number. So let's just say the, f uh, oh, we, well, yeah, uh, in this case, it could actually go over three, so we should mod this by three. But eh, I, I wrote it kind of lazily, but you could do it in other ways. Uh, but now, now that we have numbers that are already uh, between one, zero, one, and two, we can reconstruct that. So let's just say answer is zero, zero uh, for index in range of zero and max digits. We so we construct. Uh, okay, so I, I did. I'm doing it the other way. In theory, if you do it backwards, you can just shift. But um, but I'm maybe I'm just doing it the other way. It's fine. Either way, it should be the same. But yeah, so digit times uh, digits of index. This is kind. Of, this will come in, uh, and then now we shift it by three on every uh, on everything and then now at the very end we could just return the results and that should get us the answer I hope because otherwise then that would be a sad situation <laughs> but yeah and now let's submit ooh Oh, the negative numbers. Eh, okay, I mean, I, I accept this, but, um, oops. <sighs> I mean, that's not in the input per se, or, mm, okay. I guess I assume uh, non-negative. So now we have to do a little, we have to be a little bit tricky with how to handle negative numbers. How, what does negative numbers mean? So in this case, hmm. how do we get this big number though? Are we using some kind of like, hmm. So I think this is right if it, if it was non-negative numbers, but now we have to think a little bit more about how to handle the negative numbers. And I'm not quite sure how I got this big number. Let's print out the digits for a second. Hmm. Why do I get two the other way? But I think that actually makes it easier for us, but it's still a little awkward. In that, uh, huh. I'm just curious how this happens. I guess it's up to two, but how does it get to, um, hmm. maybe there's something, I, I think at this particular, I know how to fix it, but I'm just actually curious about why it's happening. So I'm just, maybe I'm learning something about Python itself. Okay, fine. Um, So numbers you go to two, but why does this keep going? Huh?
Like, what, does, does negative 1 divided by 3 not return to what I think it does? That's kind of cool in a way that it lets us uh, solve this in a better way. But it's still, I think I'm just surprised that, uh, <laughs> so you still get to learn something every day uh, for me. Even as I'm really experienced in Python, but I didn't know that. Hmm. So that negative one divided by three actually returns negative one instead of zero. Huh. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I actually <laughs> what you what you're watching right now is actually me just discovering something. Um. Actually, didn't is that expected behavior? Should that be expected behavior? Huh. I need to read up on the docs later, but I just actually did not know that. But it turns, it seems like, uh, in a way, that actually benefits us. So maybe, you know, because you can look at this as the, um, almost in a weird way, um, as a two's comp, like a complement number. Um, it's kind of like a two's, um, what's it called? Two, uh, two's complementary, is it? Or, su or supplementary? No, complementary. So, okay. So that is actually, hmm, did not expect that. But, uh, but okay, we can just count the number of negatives. And if number of negatives is, uh, if num is less than zero, negatives plus one. And then now it should be straightforward in knowing that, um, well, with negatives, if negatives mod, uh, my three is not equal to zero, so it can only be zero or one, right? Because uh, of the because if it's zero, that means that they match up. If it's one, that means that one of them is the negative, and that's the number that you want. Then in that case, because of how it's structured for whatever reason, we can actually just take. Um, I think technically, digit contains the digit for us. So, uh, so this is a little bit hacky, but let me just play around with it. Uh, but and <laughs> and it may seem a little bit magical to you. Uh, oops. So I don't want to dismiss that. But okay. But just to make it more explicit, this is actually just um, power of three to the max digits. Okay. I think that's a little bit more easier to understand why. Um, but okay, that was a little bit of an accent, to be honest. I today I learned. Hmm. Did you know that? If if you did already know that, leave in the comments. And if you didn't, also leave in the comments. Just let me know what is expected. I I guess I just never, ex you know, we could even just try one big number and then see. And oops, okay, attempt to submit too quickly. But yeah, okay, cool. Let's just submit again. Cool. Uh, yeah, so we d definitely failed to connect or consider the negative number. Uh, but because of a probably in C++, I was able to do this. Uh, you probably just need to do something similar for your, uh, in your language, but keeping track of the negatives and stuff like that. And then your bit counters would be good. Um, yeah, negative one mod divided by three. Did I know that? Probably not. Okay. But, uh, yeah, wow, hmm. Negative two mod two by three is also negative one. I mean, I guess it goes, it rounds down to the smallest number, but I just didn't, I just didn't really think about it. Um, okay. So, um, so what is the, so I would say in terms of complexity, this is just, well, max digit is 21, so technically linear, or if you want to call it that, then it is O of n times the, ma uh, the max number of digits. Uh, and and yeah, and that's the running time complexity. The space complexity, we only, um, we only need the digits, uh, so only O of one space, or O of number of digits space, depending on how you want to count it. And yeah. This is, for an interview problem, this is just basically knowing trivia, so I wouldn't expect it, or if they give it still, it's a little bit sad. Um, but, like, I'm okay with not practicing or knowing this. Uh, for 
on competitive programming, they do do weird stuff like this. But even then, I feel like this is a one-trick pony. So uh, you may not see it ever again. Uh, I don't think I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's all I have with this farm. It's weird. It's annoying. But hopefully it's fun. Uh, I had a little bit of fun, to be honest. And I discovered something about Python. So anyway, uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Join us on the Discord. Let me know what, uh, you know how you feel about this farm. And I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.